So Intersend API, the best payment gateway in Canada. Where did you come up with this claim? Okay, okay, okay. Hold on. Now that's why I'm explaining this to you. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of what the API actually does and why you should be even considering this as something that you want to use and why I consider it the best. And I'm also going to show you also the project that you'll be able to build by the end of this particular series. So yeah, let's get straight to it. First of all, you have the functionalities of Mobile Money Solutions, which is the M-Pesa, which you can easily integrate with their very user-friendly, developer-friendly API, I would say. And the way it's more reliable, by far, to existing payment gateways, which I won't <coughs> mention. And you also have card payments, which are provided for local as well as international transactions that you can be able to take advantage of. Banking integrations, which integrates with most of the supported banks here in Kenya. So you can also have a full-on system that has banking out the wazoo. You also have other payment options like Bitcoin and Cash App, but we'll get much more into that later on in this series. Okay, so Intersend API, what is the selling point? What I would say is the efficiency in terms of uh, streamlining the integration process from the developer perspective and also for the business it makes it so simple for them to have full-on solutions from receiving payments you know paying off uh, suppliers the entire chain automation of maybe uh, subscription services you already have this baked in the seamless experience is also smooth from both the consumer perspective as well as the developer perspective and the security will get much deeper into this when we go into the website. So yeah, that is not gonna be something I touch on heavily. For the m -Pesa integration, it's so simple to integrate. I will show you this in a few. And the payment options will also help you to reach the last, the very niche users that you want to reach because without m -Pesa, you really have kind of kneecapped yourself from most of the market, as well as the convenience of being able to transact using m -Pesa. You already get that out of the wazoo. And yeah, for M-Pesa transactions, I think I already said this, not much will be said. So I'm going to move on to the card payments, which for this, the checkout experience is very smooth. For this, it is a 3D kind of a checkout. And as well as uh, the streamline process, I'll just show you. The UI UX is just amazing. So moving on swiftly. Yeah, so that is a brief, a very brief overview of the Intersend API. So right now, let's move on to the fun part. What exactly you'll be building at the end of this tutorial series. So yeah, let's check that out. So my people, lo and behold, this is the application that I thought best would encompass everything, every API that this particular service offers from the deposit, the withdrawal. So as you can see, you'll be able to add funds, to withdraw funds, and as well, I've added um, a way for you to buy airtime, sending money to the bank, sending money to a till slash pay bill. We'll also be able to add something like a subscription right there and a way to do refunds. Then probably we can, uh, we'll add more features as we go along, but this is the bare minimum. So I'm gonna show you how this exactly works right now. So let's go ahead and do a deposit because why not? So if I go ahead and uh, begin the deposit okay 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 so if i end head over here enter my phone number uh so do note that uh, the balance right now is at 11 shillings and 49 cents and if i go ahead and uh, do a deposit like so no okay we're in the buy at time uh, model so let's get off that same shebang add funds So I'm expecting an SDK push. And let me enter that. And bada boom, bada bam, it should be really quick to pick up on this. Then you'll be able to see a confirmation. As you can see, wallet top up completed successfully. Of which you can also top up with a card and we'll get into that in a few. And you can see the wallet has updated in real time. If I also wanted to do the buy airtime routes, I can still do that. Do that. Let me buy airtime. I don't know. 
what the lowest amount is. I will check, but maybe I can do this by Okay, I doubt that amount is too little or something. No, 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 not at all, not at all. So I have received five shillings airtime. Nice. So yeah, as you can see, that has also updated. There's also this one, which I thought would be good to show you guys the card payments as well as this particular model so as you can see from here you can be presented with two options if you decide to pay with card here is uh the way to particular uh, jesus christ i'm fumbling the way to actually pay with the card so yeah those are basically what we'll be checking out so let's just go ahead first of all and go through um their websites and see more features that i probably didn't cover so as you can see from the site, uh, basically the steps on how to start using is of course to start by sign up. You can see the supported payments gateways right here. So once you receive like maybe international payments, you will have all this on your intersend dashboard. You can be able to generate payment links even without citing a single line of code to be able to receive uh, payments. And of course, to integrate to your website and app, they have provided several, several resources for you to be able to do so, from SDKs to, of course, the REST API and solutions for the no-code people, the guys who are using WordPress, Shopify, you know, the whole shebang. For the withdrawals or payouts, this is something I also like because for the card payment, it only takes two to three days to settle. So no long wait times. And as well as for mobile payments and Bitcoin, that is instantly available in your account. So shout out to them. You also have multiple ways to get paid, which I have gone over. You have Bitcoin, you have Cash App, you have M-Pesa, you have bank transfers, and of course you have card. So keep that in mind. The success rate, of course, they... They usually uh, they give a user a different method of paying in case on a rare, rare, rare occasion, maybe that transaction fails. So basically, that is that in a nutshell. So I'm not going to go through all the information on the site. What I'm more interested in is my developers. So that is why we are here on the developer documentation. So in order to get started, as a developer, if you don't have an account, which I'm guessing you don't have at the moment. So you'll need to head over to sandbox.intersend.com, whereby it will be very simple for you to get some test credentials that you can be using going forward to, uh, to be able to follow along with this particular tutorial and, you know, have what you need at the top of your, of your fingertips. So just go ahead and click on the capture. And once you have done that, you'll be able to access your API key right here from uh, either click on this, but in case this disappears after some time, you can always come to the Manage tab and uh, get your test API keys. So mostly the publishable key is usually required for uh, the pay button, um, the SDK. This should, the API token is usually required for more you know, more uh, sensitive parts of the APIs like the withdrawals and, uh, you know, working with the wallets. So make sure once you generate the API token, you have to, you know, store it somewhere uh, that you will never lose so that you can be able to always use that. Because I think once you've generated it once, um, in the live version at least, to the best of my knowledge, that will be gone. It will have disappeared. So be sure to, you know, be very wary of that very wary of that also something that i also checked out you can be able to customize your checkouts i'll be able to show you that in a minute so first of all before you even start um, working on this you will need to authenticate your api request by using these particular keys which as i have shown you can get them from that particular uh, page so what we're gonna do this is basically what we'll cover in this particular series. We'll cover 
all of this from this SDKs, which will be able to help you from PHP, Node.js, Flutter. Okay, probably not Flutter, but uh, the rest we can be able to cover. So on this particular list, we'll be able to see, we'll go over the payment button, the checkout link, the SDK push, the status, all of this up to the very last receiving uh, wallet information and uh, creating refunds and receiving refunds. So if you want to be able to follow along, just be sure to subscribe and turn on that bell and you'll be able to be notified every time a video drops. Hopefully, I can liaise with the, with the guys at Intersend to be able to bring you all this. But at the moment, I'm just doing um, what we can be able to cover at this particular time. So right now, what I want to get into is um, the simplest of uh, the simplest ways to be able to do this. So we'll be able to check out this payment button element and also probably we can do the SDK push. So with this, you can be able to import all the JavaScript needed to be able to utilize this SDK to initiate the payments. So to add this, it's pretty simple, pretty simple. So if we go back to our homepage right here, I'm going to open a new terminal just for us to test this uh, implementation. So, okay, when that loads up, uh, we can head back to these docs. Okay, okay, okay. So, look at this. So, right here, there are parameters that you can pass right here in the payments data. So, here you have the currency. So, if you choose a USD, that is where you will be able to have different values, like maybe a Bitcoin, at cash up, um, but if you choose something like Kenya shillings, you will have uh, M pesa and card only. The amount is also optional, it uh, depends on uh, the if you want this to be passed, then it will be fixed. But uh, the user can also enter that phone number, email as well. API reference it is recommended because you can be able to track it to have uh, to know be uh, to know the transaction status. So these are all optional parameters. But uh, what I would say are uh, actually very important here is the redirect URL, the mobile tariff, because you will now specify who will be taking on the charges, and the card tariff. So these are very important. And one more thing is this method, because um, once you specify the method, you will know which methods will appear on the checkout. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, check that out. So. Uh, we're going to use some HTML to make this as bare bone as possible. So let's just go ahead and uh, I make a new directory, which I will call uh, intersend uh, button. Also, I will be able, I'll provide all this uh, particular code in the GitHub repo. So you'll be able to follow along and grab any of this code any step of the way. So we can now change the directory into that uh, intersend button we just created. Then uh, I will create an index. And then let's open this up. Okay, so index. So I'm just going to create some uh, HTML right there using uh, emits. Okay, so t uh, so turns out right now uh, my extensions are not yet They're still loading up for some reason. So we can go over something else I would like to cover. So as I said, I wanted to check out SDKs as we continue. So when it comes to SDKs, I usually use the documentation that is in, uh, where, where is the documentation for this? It's at intersend PHP SDK.
yeah from package from packages at this one so i like this one i like this one this one is really in depth with what you can do and uh, so you should you can also check this out i will leave the link in the description because i think this is way more you know i like this just me i like this so you can use this one and i think you would prefer it so let's go check on vs this thing has been updating yet this so many times five updates okay so we're gonna call this uh Okay, stick it, stick it. What, what, is, what is going on? One second. Something's up here. Okay, I will ignore that. Moving on. Button uh, tutorial. Okay, so once we are done that, what we can do here is now bringing in the element, which is the button itself, right here. So if you come back here, you can go ahead and go into the payment button element. So what we have to do is accept all payment methods because what you really change out right here is, uh, you change out what you want to, to accept, you know, from uh, the data among the data currency, if you change the data currency, as I said, out the data currency, that is where the values will it will change in particular. So for now we need that. So once you have that in there, now what you need is uh, you don't really need the CSS, but I guess so that this is not very ugly. You can also have that particular uh, CSS. Okay, so the JavaScript is right here. So you can, we'll put this right before the end of the body tag. Okay, not bad. So you first need to specify. Okay, so we're good. So now what you now need to do is um, go and get the SDK itself, the inline. So the payment button right there. Then grab this particular script and just place it before you close out the head. Yeah, perfect. So now what we need to do is get our API key right here. So if I go back into managing and grab my test API key, I can copy this publishable key and bada boom bada bam replace that then on complete this will be displayed on uh, the console but again, right here now you can implement your logic to do something else so let's go ahead and test that so let me open this up with my live server So as you can see, we have this button. Maybe I would like it centered, uh, doesn't really matter. Let's just go ahead and test it. So as you can see, look at this, look at this beautiful, beautiful uh, checkout user interface. Look at that. Which is, this is also an update I really liked because previously it, it didn't look like this, but now it's, it looks really nice. So right here is where you enter the phone number, uh, the reference. And by the way, all this, you can uh, change from right here, from these attributes. So I can change these amounts. I can change the currency. So it, let's, let's change the currency to USD and see the difference right there. And also change the currency to US, why not? And let's refresh that. Hit on pay now. We now have a converted rate of that particular amount. So right now this is 10 USD. You can see the exchange rate has been provided there. So for you to be able to pay this, you'll have to. You no, know let, let me test it. Let, let me use a VPN. 
let's go to let's go to Atlanta and see how this pans out see how this pans out for them pay now hmm. I guess you ain't fooling them I don't know I don't know I thought probably I would have that in USD but that's okay you see how the changes affect what exactly will be in the UI so let's just undo those changes you you want to run your you, want, you always want to run this you always want to run this in um, a live server not uh, something local like a disk that is what that is how you want to run this so for this you can use a tunneling tool like ngrock which are uh, like i said i've always uh, had you guys there's a full uh, okay why am i family there's a full video explaining how to use ngrock so you can find that in the description as well okay so the other payments uh, details the other payments methods like cash app and bitcoin you have to enable them uh, from your dashboard so that is something I may have forgotten to mention, uh, but yeah, you have to do that from the dash, from the dashboard. Okay, okay, we should be good now. So let me refresh that one more time. Let's click on pay. And look at that. We now have cash up. We have cash up. So I think it, it was my bad because for you to enable this, you must go back to the dash. So, but what we want to test is the m -Pesa. so I'm going to go and do that right now. Mm -hmm. And let's go, pay that. Processing. And boom, there's the notification. Success. Ooh, look at that incredibly fast incredibly fluid let's even try one where we just cancel the transaction completely i think that would be a nice control experiment for us so yeah let's 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 do one where we cancel so refresh the page click on pay now so you know the drill two five four okay the friends testing and pay mm -hmm. cancel canceled oops request cancelled by user perfection perfection let's go ahead and check out uh, the checkout link then probably we'll just close that there and be able to come and continue with the SDK push in the next one so if I go back here, so to be able to utilize this, you first require the particular um, library. So if I go back here, no, not, not this one. So that is what you need to do. So just run that. So meanwhile, I think, I'll, let me just name this. Um, to pay button uh, to avoid any confusions. Also, while running this on Windows, you probably, if you have any antivirus, you probably need to turn it off because uh, they're notorious for causing issues. Very notorious for causing errors that are easily avoidable. Oh yeah, uh, now we just wait. Oh, come on. Like I said, issues, okay? Okay, perfect. So uh, we are done with the installation. So I'm gonna create an index file. Then what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and uh, grab this. This is for the checkout URL. Mm -hmm. So basically what, 
what this does it's it will create uh, this vendor file which will have all the particular uh, classes that you need to take advantage of it will create also this composer file which will have the version of uh, this particular library that you're using as well as uh, this readme which will basically have everything that uh, the metadata from uh, the authors not really not really something that you need to really concern yourself about once the installation is successful let's just go ahead and open up our trusted tags like i said also before this one will need something that is not running locally so yeah we have to deal with that so mm -hmm. so let's go ahead and get back our credential and paste it right here but okay okay so full disclaimer this is only because we're right now here right now developing but ne don't expose your stuff like this you do you probably need to put this in an env file then you will now include it in your project much safer this is very risky be able to redirect to a success page using this or you can redirect back to a pullback page where you can handle some other logic so right here this is the data being set in here for the customer information where you set up the amount is uh, from this particular part so the currency and the amount similar to the pay button this will affect how the particular checkouts will appear so let's just go ahead and uh, run this with the PHP server. So this is just an extension I have called a PHP server, but you can also use a ZAMP or a WAMP. Like if, if that is what you have on your on your PC, that would work just fine. But as for me, this is more convenient. So I'm going to run that. Okay. So there is a mishap now because we have several files open here running on the same server. So let me get rid of that. And this and restart this particular server. So just reload that. Okay. I'm sure this is this was done intentionally because I wanted you because before you come into the comment section telling me you got this error once you have this code you still have now to access these vendor files so before doing anything just include it like so that way it will be able to access uh, all these classes that you are trying to use right here so if i go back again and reload the thing As you can see, you should have, uh, it, it should have provided me with the, uh, okay, so the response of the checkouts right there. So it will create this uh, URL. So let me just print that, let me print it. that again so here is the URL right here so let me visit that yeah so as you can see that is that is that is your checkout right there so if I go ahead and click on that as you can see we also have three particular um, responses right there but now you can now go ahead from this particular object and uh, pick on the URL and redirect your user to that page. Once this uh, this particular checkout page has been rendered, immediately they are redirected to complete the transaction on this page, which as you can see, this is what is very important because this connection will be secure, even though we are even running this from some local host. So once again, you have your payment options beautifully laid out right there. And I believe this also responsive yeah of course it is why, why, why would i even think less of this so yeah um full code will still be available down in the description don't worry about it and be sure to tune in next time when we go over um three more of this we will we'll just make sure we go over 
uh, SDK push. The payment status will brush over this, this no code uh, options and then dive into the send money APIs. So yeah, thank you for joining me in this particular tutorial. Be sure to leave any comments down in the description of what you'd like to see us do in the next particular session. And if you have any questions, I would like to know them. So be sure to leave those down in the comments. Appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Everybody working a cubicle, which ends a Mac and a wireless to miracle. Sin